So we're on the spreadsheet. Hopefully you can see this in the video. Pretty good. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. All right. So with that in mind, let's um, put in the data. So this is off of the review. So I'm just gonna go to any column. I'm gonna, I usually don't start on the far left. I'm gonna do C and I'm just gonna type in each piece of data. So 32, 46, 48, 25, 32, 47, 38, 38, 29, 27, 51, 34, 43, 33, 23, 41, 34, 41, 45, 23, 46, 52, 21, 51, 34, 30, 48, 24, 32, and 35. And so now you can check it if you take a look here. Try to zoom you in and move this over. And so if you see where the little pointer is here on the edge, that's 30. And so there's 30 pieces of data. Okay. Okay. Zoom back out a little bit. All right. So now, how do we how do we get um, the stuff we want? So let's we want to find the mean, the median, the mode, the range, the standard deviation, and even if you want to use Excel to organize your data, it, like to put it in order instead of doing it and crossing it off. I did that on the board when I did the review by hand on the other video. Um, if you take a look, you can go over to. Sort. So where is sort? That's up here. It says sort and filter on the on the right side. It's got a little um, funnel, it looks like. And so if we sort A to Z, or we can do custom sort. I think we have to click on that first. And then I thought we could just even right click. If you right click on it, I think it brings up. Um, I thought it brought up sort. Format cells. No, I don't want to do that. So here, let's go back to um, just sort. Smallest to largest is the very first thing. It says A to Z, but the words say smallest to largest. And so you click, and now, voila, it's it's in order now. So those are all of them in order from, from the lowest one to the highest one. And so if you're finding the mean or the mode, you can just look it over and actually find it off of the computer instead of having to write it out by hand. If you want to write it out by hand, be my guest. It's going to be less um, pieces of data. I think there's only like 20 on the test. So, okay. So now let's make it do the grunt work. We want it to find the average that is adding them all together and dividing by how many there are. That's the mean. So if you go up to formulas, click formulas, and now look, it changes this whole thing on the top. And now underneath formulas, go to more functions. And so you click that, and now we have statistics, engineering, cube, information, compatibility, web. So statistical. And then you don't really click statistical. You can, but it's not going to do anything. Um, and then we go to, oh, wait. Oh, actually, if you click it, that'll keep it open. So it's a little easier. So average. We want to find the average. They don't call it the mean. They call it the average. And it says returns the arithmetic mean. So if you read it, you know, that's what's going on. So we're going to click that. Now it says, hey, what do you want me to do? CD or D8 or what? And so I usually, you can type it in. You could do C1 to C30. That's where I put it in column C. Or you can be lazy. I like being lazy. And just here, let me move this over. You can move the box wherever. You just click on the lowest value and drag down until you get to the bottom, to 52, and then release it. 
And now that says C1 to C30. Some students like to type it in the box themselves. You can do it that way too. But it shows you what numbers it's using right here, and it actually shows you the mean right there. So 36.76 repeating. So we'll say OK. And now in this box, that was just the arbitrary box I clicked on, that's the mean. And so that's where we got the 36.77 on the review. Um, the median is the one exactly in the middle. So you just go down between 15 and 16. There's 34, there's 35. I average those two together. Um, I think you can also find the mean and the, the mode is just the one that occurs most. I wouldn't use the computer to find that and just look and see which one happens most times. Um, the range is subtracting the largest from smallest. Standard deviation, ooh, that one's really hard to find by hand. So let's make it find the standard deviation. So in the same thing, more functions, statistical, and now we're gonna drag it down until you see standard deviation. And there's standard deviation dot P or standard deviation dot S. Remember, there are, there's a difference in the formulas. If it's a population, you divide by N. If it's a sample, you divide by N minus one. So uh, we look at the problem, it says note, this is a population. So we want standdev.p. And we don't want those values. We just want 1 through 30 again. I'm just clicking on the values again. And so again, C1 to C30 is where I put my data. And there is the standard deviation, 9.218. Again, if you click OK, now it's just in that box. You can write it down and go back to it. And that's where we got the 9.218. Okie dokie. So that is how you find the, the mean and the standard deviation using Excel. And again, if you really, really wanted to, I think you can find the median. I, I personally, I think it's easier to find the median by hand, but yeah, there's median. So it's under the same thing. More functions, statistics, and then median. And if we do 21, 52, there it is, 34.5. So you can use that to find the median also. Uh, the trick is, the big mistake people make is they just click on a box, like they click on the last box that they entered, 52. Don't do that. you got to have it on a different box somewhere when you have it figured out. And I usually just pick some arbitrary box and then leave them on there. You could just write down the answer if you want to. All right. If you're doing the homework and doing multiple problems, this is helpful too, because you could just type it in and then just re click on this and um, make it find the mean of, you can change it to whatever. Like let's say you had another problem where you put it in A from one to 10. You just make that A1 to A10 and then hit enter and it'll give you the answer again. All right. Okay. So those are all the videos. I hope they were informative and helpful. If not, email me and I'll explain it more.